Greetings, Internet, and welcome to the first Insane Ian Q&A. Or AMA, or whatever. Whatever acronym you prefer. Recently, I went on my Twitter, my Insane Ian Facebook page, and my Patreon, and asked my fans if they could ask me some questions. And they did. So here they are. First question. Did you see Tucci Gang on SNL, and if so, what did you think? SNL doesn't often do straight-ahead song parodies, but in this case they did. I actually didn't until this question was asked by Joe Blevins on Twitter. But uh, I went and I watched it. It's a parody of Lil Pump's Gucci Gang, called Tucci Gang, about Stanley Tucci. It's Lil Pump actually parodying his own song, and Sam Rockwell, and... Sam Rockwell isn't doing anything except dancing. And as a parody, it's not bad. It's, it's a decent parody. Not real familiar with the original song, so it was entertaining. Having the original artist do a parody of their own song is not entirely unheard of. It's not as common. I remember Sir Mix-a-Lot doing a parody of Baby Got Back a couple times for different things, for like commercials and stuff. So that's a thing that exists. Uh, let's see, what else ha got asked on Twitter? Our pal Eclectic Lee actually wrote in a couple of questions. Uh, number one, uh, what comedy music do you listen to yourself? Or is that a tricky question to ask for popular case since you're friends with so many of them? I do like comedy music a lot. There's a, a lot of different comedy music that I listen to. Um, obviously, The Great Luke Ski, TV's Kyle, Devo Spice, Power Salad, Worm Quartet. Anybody who's on the FUMP, I try to listen to pretty much everything that's posted at the FUMP. Um, as far as outside of the FUMP, um, you know, I try to listen to the Dr. Demento show pretty regularly. I, I don't uh, subscribe as often as I should to the show, but I do try to listen uh, often. Um, artists like The Lonely Island, obviously Weird Al, Tenacious D, Garfunkel and Oates, Stephen Lynch, I'm a huge Stephen Lynch fan, I've seen him live tons of times, as with Al. Um, so there's there's a lot of uh, uh, comedy stuff that I listen to. Uh, lately I've been going back and watching Epic Rack Battles of History again, because I really like uh, that channel, and I've you know, been a fan of that for a while. Uh, Axis of Awesome is really great on YouTube. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of comedy music I listen to. I listen to a lot of comedy music. Uh, and so, you know, I, I will... Give anything that's out there a listen at least once because uh, I think comedy music is great and I think everybody should listen to it. And I like listening to it. I, I own a lot of comedy music. Um, so yeah. He also asks, which of your songs is your favorite? Lee, that's like asking which is my favorite child. I mean, I don't have any children, but you do, so I'm sure you can relate. But uh, I, I like a, a lot of my songs. Uh, usually I'm pretty proud of them, that's why I release them. My favorite recent song is probably uh, Summertime Jam, which I released last August. Um, but, you know, overall, Benedict Cumberbatch holds a, a special place in my heart because it was my first number one on the Dr. Demento show. Um, Dig Dug it was my first kind of explosion hit as far as the comedy music community and and the video three years later. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to pick just one, but those are probably high ranking right now. Usually the answer is, what is my favorite song, is the one I just most recently did, you know, trying to get the exposure for that song. So, there you go. Which of your songs was the most fun to make, Lee asks. That's a tough question, too, because a lot of them are always fun to make. Um, not so much usually the writing process, but, but getting in there and recording. Any of the songs I got to record uh, with my friend Ben, who does my backing tracks usually, um, going into his studio and recording with him is always fun. Uh, it's a little tougher for me to do now that I'm living in Chicago and he's still in Maryland, but uh, anytime we would get together, hang out, bang out a song, or a couple songs. And it's always fun to get Ben to sing backup vocals on a song, because I make him sing the most ridiculous phrases. And him just singing those outside of hearing the song 
is amazing and hilarious and one of my favorite things to do when I record. Um, but yeah, so like anything that, that Ben and I recorded, which is a lot of my catalog. So, And four, he says, uh, when will Scooter Picnic return? Uh, well, Scooter Picnic has put out two songs last year. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Scooter Picnic is my side project with TV's Kyle. Uh, TV's Kyle being the creator of Mighty Magiswords. Uh, so obviously he's been busy doing that. So Scooter Picnic has kind of been on a little bit of a hiatus because he's busy making cartoons for TV. But we did two songs last year, uh, This Groove is Too Dope for Us, and our first song to ever hit the Dr. Demento Funny 25 for the end of the year, It's Frog Noticing Time, uh, with a title by Shoebox of Worm Quartet. So two songs came out last year. Uh, they are the start of something else, but we're not, we don't have a thing planned. We're just like, oh, wait, here's an idea for a song, let's do it real quick. So it's not like, we're not doing it for February album writing month like we did the first album. Um, it's just going to be a kind of a process where it's like, we're, we're, we're easing back into doing Scooter Picnic stuff. The way Kyle and I write is very improv. So he'll write a verse, and usually it's a story song where he's telling a story, and so he'll send it back to me to continue that story, and we bounce ideas back and forth off of each other depending on how, who directed the song to go where. Um, it's Frog Noticing Time actually turned into an opposite of that, is where, like, usually I'll start the lyrics for a song and send it to Kyle, and he will take it in a completely different direction than I intended the song to go. And, you know, throwing in bizarre references to things. And I actually flipped the script on him this time and did that to him, uh, because he started the song about frogs, sent it to me, and I took it into talking about the punk frogs from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles original series. So, there you go. Uh, there is no definite deadline or date for new Scooter Picnic stuff, but it's coming. Let's see some other questions. So, the only question I got on my Facebook page was also from Lee Seitz. And he asked me if I could tell him a redneck joke. See, right now, uh, I myself am guest starring in drawn form in the webcomic called Wonder Weenies, put out by our friend Corey Kramer. Uh, Corey did a couple of uh, fan drawings of me a, a little bit ago, and uh, really dig his stuff. One of them ended up being, actually two of them ended up being uh, covers for singles. He did the cover for the Ghostbusters song I did called Bustin' Makes Me Feel Good, and he also did the cover to the single for Doctor Who. And uh, he's drawn a bunch of stuff for me, so he's now included me as myself in his webcomic. He has a webcomic about a superhero team called Wonder Weenies. Uh, one of them is an actual hot dog. So yeah, uh, I'm guest starring in that comic, and one of the characters uh, on the team, Murray, uh, never gets anybody's name right and misunderstands everything because he immediately jumps to what he thinks they're talking about. So he thinks that I'm not a comedy musician. He thinks that I'm a stand-up comedian, and I tell jokes like, you might be a redneck if. So he thinks that I sing these jokes. Yeah. So it was asked uh, in the comic for me to perform my signature bit, which was, you might be a redneck. He thinks I'm Jeff Foxworthy. I don't know uh, many redneck jokes. You might be a redneck if you say you bought a new house and you have to have folks come over to help take the wheels off of it. It's the only one I can remember. You might be a redneck if asked for two forms of ID, you show your fishing license and your belt buckle. Uh, there you go. In two. And finally, we go to Patreon, and Michael Charbonneau uh, wrote in to say, what's your favorite video you've done, and is there a song you wish you'd done a video for that you haven't? Um, my favorite video that I've done is probably Dig Dug. Uh, it's the one that took the most time. It took three years to do that video because we started working on it, ran out of money. I did the Kickstarter to do it, which ended up being the Kickstarter for the Grand Theft Audio DVD CD collection. Uh, that had all my, my first collection of B-sides. And it's the one that took the most time to edit and, and film. And, you know, <laughs> actors went away and actors came back. So 
uh, got that finally put together, and I think it's it's the best indication of what I had in my head visually to to have the video be, and it's it's my favorite music video I've done. Is there a music video that I wish I could have done that I haven't? Yes, and that's why I have a Patreon page. This way I, I have Patreon be my virtual tip jar so that, uh, you know, if you like my work you can subscribe and get extra stuff, see stuff early, and get behind the scenes stuff, and usually the this money that I get from Patreon I put toward making new videos. Um, so there's videos for Internet Famous I have planned, I've been slowly working on a video for Iron Man, it should have come out months ago, actually almost at this point, almost a year ago, because things. So yeah, there's bunches of music videos. The, the original plan for Patreon was to make music videos, and now it's turned into making taste test videos and other media videos that are coming soon uh, to this channel. But uh, the original goal was to make music videos, and I'm trying to get back into that. As I'm working on new music, uh, I'm going to try to do a music video for the song as I make it new, um, which was the overall goal. Um, Patreon is a, is a really great resource, and, and as the virtual tip jar that it is, uh, the more money I get, the more and better videos I can make with it. So that's the hope. Um, so yeah, but, but initially, Internet Famous, um, uh, Watch Your Language was a video I wanted to do a kinetic typography video for, and then Al, Weird Al put out Word Crimes and did a kinetic typography video for that. And I was like, man, it's exactly what I was thinking of for my language song. So, you know. But uh, yeah, and there you go, answers to questions. Thanks very much, everybody, for uh, tuning in to this bizarre and weirdly short Q&A video because only a few of you uh, wrote in. I didn't have a lot of notice for it. I gave it maybe two, three days' notice. But, uh, you know, if you have any questions for me, you can uh, send them to my Twitter, at InsaneIanB, and use the hashtag IIQA, InsaneIan question and answer. So, hashtag IIQA, if you have any questions for me, I can do another one of these. Uh, you can check it out that way. Hope you guys enjoyed this, this little impromptu Q&A video. Bye!